uh, uh, we're having a discussion, talking about the reports uh, in the Punch newspaper about the um, inability for a huge amount of kids to gain access to vaccines. And this happens to be your field, your area. Yes. Yes. So um, w we're wondering at this point, um, what can you pinpoint as a major challenge for the health care, uh, the government side on the health side, uh, in, in getting these vaccines to the kids? Great. Thank you again for having me. I think that um, I will introduce myself <laughs> so that um, your viewers know who, who the, um, is speaking. Oh, we did, we did, we did a, an introduction already, oh, but you can go okay. ahead and do that. I, oh, I didn't get that. Okay, okay right. that's great. I'm Dr. Fikiro Chin Woko. I'm the CEO of Nigeria Solidarity Support Fund. And that you cor correctly said, we work to improve uptake of vaccines in Nigeria, working closely with the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. And um, yes, we, the news today has been one that is not news for us in the field, but I guess it's news for um, those of us that are not aware. Um, to answer your question, what are the challenges and what are the reasons why the vaccine uptake is is low? and why we have high rates of zero dose in, amongst children in the southwest and I'm sure in other parts of Nigeria as well. Um, there are several reasons for it, um, but like you said, on the government side, we have the um, supply and demand side issue. So I'll start with the demand side. Um, vaccines are necessary, but they are not, um, there are no, um, it's not compulsory, it's not, um, you're not compelled to take vaccination. So there has to be a willingness of the people to accept to take vaccines. And that is one of the greatest challenges we have, the vaccine hesitancy amongst um, people, especially um, people with a um, lower educational background or people who have not received um, um, correct education on the importance and the relevance of vaccines in preventing vaccine preventable diseases. Um, and so, um, the, the country where we're, we're working, we're fighting against a lot of vaccine hesitancy issues. And so we have a lot of campaigns and advocacy to tr increase their knowledge on the use of vaccines in those people places. And for the supply side issue, what has happened over the years is that we have had the same infrastructure catering to the increasing number of population. And we have the um, deteriorating health facilities. We have reduced the number of healthcare workers um, due to the whole DAPA syndrome and um, um, a lot of migration um, in share from the rural areas to the urban areas. And then we have health financing challenges because, um, of course, we know that the economic um, um, situation in Nigeria, the rate of the, the, the impact of the economy on health is large. So we had those several issues that prevent the access of vaccination, but we know that um, this campaign um, that was flagged off in Akure is one of the ways that we're trying to bridge those, those gaps in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, 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 Doctor, um, one of the, the, the aspects of the reports that actually even caught me on a way, even my, my colleague here, who oh, was surprised, is the fact that Lagos has a, ha, recorded one of the highest in terms of children without access. And from some of the issues you mentioned, uh, which has to do with the willingness of the people, the, the people, um, as well as um, facilities, uh, one would think that Lagos, with its awareness and the fact that it's a center of excellence and so on, um, also the largest um, revenue generating states, if, if, you know, yeah. uh, wouldn't have such problems. But we do. We do have the problem. What might be uh, the, the problem in, in your own uh, experience? Okay. Okay, so yes, yeah, so um, Lagos would be shocking to everyone because you look at Lagos as an urban city. Um, and Lagos is also a very, um, a, an immigrant state, if I may call that. So the influx of people, new um, um, people, 
come to Lagos every month and in fact um, statistics is very it shows that it's very high if lots of people from other states into Lagos is high and most of those people um, coming into Lagos settle in the suburban areas of Lagos and so while we have a higher education we have great infrastructure in the um, urban part of Lagos we have some urban areas in Lagos that suffer the same problem as the rural community would suffer so we we still have areas like you could do like a pair that are that are largely inhabited by um, new migrants into the state and still suffer a lot of these um, health systems challenges that we have. Another um, issue with financing for um, vaccination is that primary health care is under, still under one roof, so it's under the federal. So the financing for vaccination comes from the federal and not from the state. And so it is, it is, it is not a um, legal state as it were that um, finances primary health care activities. All right. Uh, th that clarifies a lot. Uh, well, the NPHCDA has continued to reiterate that they put the vaccination of kids and everyone else needing it as top priority, you know, saying that they are willing to continue the sensitization. And mm -hmm. since this is a field where you work and you've been working and doing your beat as well, um, we're looking forward to also having you uh, Let's work together. Let's let's put it yes. out there and yes. um, to get get more people to know about this. So we'll, we'll be keeping in touch. Thank you so much. Yes, I will need the partnership of the media, especially because you have um, a reach wider reach than we do. So please help us um, spread the word, and we are very available to collaborate in any way. Vaccines are the most cost-effective public health intervention right now in the world. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, we we'll continue to wish you the best in the good work that you do. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank, thank you for joining us. Okay, that was uh, Dr. Fijiro.